In today's video we're going to do a more complex program. We're going to look at how we can uh, create a, a program that stores an array of numbers. We're going to populate that array of numbers um, with random numbers and we're going to display the largest and the smallest element of that array. We're also going to look at how we can create an array of uh, an indeterminate size. So we'll, we'll decide the size of the array during the running of the program. It won't be a fixed size at the start of the program. So let's look at uh, how we're going to do that. So let's start off by declaring some variables. Let's declare a variable called largest number integer. Smallest, oops, smallest number integer. Size, this is going to be the size of my array later. And at this point, we can take in the size as an input because we're going to need that quite soon. So let's input size. And it's probably a good idea to have an output and just say, please enter how many numbers you want in your array. So I've got size coming in. Now I'm going to declare my array. So I'm going to say my array is going to be called numbers. It's an array and it's going to be size. So whatever variable 5, 6, 10, 100 I decide is my size, that's going to be how big my array is going to become. That's that declared. So now what I'm going to do is create my function that's going to load my array. So I'm going to start off, I'll actually do the call now. So I'm going to call load array and I'm going to send load array the size and numbers. So now it's time to create the array. So let's create it. We called it load array. And we add some parameters. So the, those parameters were size. That's okay. And we'll have a variable called number. Number. What should we call it? Number array. Oops, I can't spell today. Number array. And that's going to be an array of type integer. And we're not going to return anything. It's just going to populate the array. So press OK on that. We'll declare a new variable. So this one's going to be uh, random num. And we're going to need a counter for when we populate our array. So we'll do it with a, with a for loop. So we'll declare a counter. And then I'm going to create another one. I'm going to call this one largest possible number. The reason for that one is we're going to create an array of let's say 10 characters, 10 numbers and we'll, we'll want to make sure that we can have some different numbers so we might have an array say of 10 numbers where the largest number could be 50. So you could have 3, 5, 49, 47 but we could then choose let's say 500 so we can have we can change what the biggest number could be put into that array. So let's do uh, an output and let's say enter the largest let's call it highest makes more sense doesn't it the highest number to oh, I don't like the highest value that's an input. So we'll input that. Largest pulse num. Okay, so now it's time to populate our array. So we do that with a for loop. We've done this in a previous video. So let's do uh, the counter. Let's set the counter to zero and it will be len size minus one. 
the minus one because the arrays will be zero indexed, increasing. So first job, we're going to assign a value. We're going to say the variable random num equals random, which is a function, largest pos num. Well then, add to our array, so assign, and we'll say, capitalize that one before, number array, yep, number array equal uh, the position counter equals random num random num and I'm just going to put a little output here just to prove this is working we'll just say array loaded okay I'm going to go back to main now at the moment we don't know that whether that's worked or not we have no way of telling so what we'll do is we'll have an output here and we'll just say let's let's have a look at um, what do we call it? Let's say numbers square bracket seven. Let's have a look at the seventh element in an array. So let's run that. I'll have ten, and I'll say the largest number could be sixty-five, sixty-eight even. Press enter. Oops, I've made a mistake. run that again. We all make mistakes. So 10 items, 68 is the largest possible, and then the, whatever's at position 7 happens to be 28. Let's run that again to make sure that's random. So 10, 68, this time I've got 30 there. So everything's working okay. So the next stage is to deal with our largest and our smallest numbers. So back to our main and let's create a function. So I'm going to say we need to declare a variable largest num which we've done and we're going to say I can delete that now, I don't need that test. So I'm going to say assign largest number and this will be a call I'll call it big and I'm going to pass it numbers let's add a function let's call it big and its parameter is going to be numbers which happens to be an integer array and we're going to return a string, I'm to string we're going to integer back and that's going to be called uh, largest So let's declare the variable. This is going to be oops, a daisy. This is going to be largest. It's an integer. Let's to say, let's assign it, and let's just make the assumption that largest at this point, because we don't know what's in the array, is the whatever's in the first value. So we'll say uh, numbers square bracket zero. So whatever happens, the first item's got to be the largest because it's not checked anything else. Let's have a, a loop counter variable again. So let's declare it. Let's call it a loop counter. And then let's have a for loop to do the work for us. So we're going to say loop counter start at zero. This time we need to go to the size of numbers one because that is an array and press OK zero there we go and then we need 
here, as we do each variable, we want an if statement. So we'll say if numbers square brackets a uh, loop counter, so a position loop counter is greater than what we've called the largest, which we've set up here as position zero at the first point, then we need to make the largest the same as numbers at position loop counter because that's going to now contain the largest value and then we'll return it back so let's go back to our main and we'll need to output that so let's output let's do it there let's create an output and say the pretty little the largest number is ampersand largest number. Fingers crossed this works, so let's run it. We want uh, 10 items in the array. We'll say the largest possible one is going to be 50. Array is loaded, our largest number in that array was 45. Let's just run it again just to make sure. 10, 50, this time it's 49. Now, how do I know that's true? Well, we could slow the program down a little bit. Let's look at the um, at the big function. And what we could do, actually we could do it in the load, load array function, I guess, as we add it here, if we output number number array square brackets counter we should be able to see as it populates it what's actually in the array so let's run that let's say 10 numbers maximum number is 50 there's our numbers so we can see the 10 there so the largest 46 and the largest they loaded number is 46 so we know that's working right okay so next step back to main let's deal with the smallest so let's do basically the same thing so I've already got my smallest so let's declare the sign of variable and say smallest can't spell smallest number we'll call it small so we'll say equals uh, small open brackets and we'll send it numbers okay so now what we need to do is create that function so let's create a new function we'll call it small and we're going to add the parameters um, numbers and that was an array and we're going to return an integer and we're going to return smallest smallest there we go okay so let's declare a variable let's call it smallest because that's what we're going to return and we're going to say right okay we don't know what it is but what we'll do is we'll assign smallest we'll work on the same basis as before we'll say smallest equals numbers at position zero we've got to assume that the first number is the smallest another variable let's declare another loop counter okay and let's put our for loop in it's exactly the same as before so we'll say loop counter start at zero going to or oh, size oops, numbers minus one and then our if statement is exactly the same as before it's just the other way around so we say if numbers at position loop counter is this time less than the smallest which we'd set previously up here at zero then 
sign smallest is numbers at position that count. Full press OK and then it will return the smallest. So let's go back to our main and test it. So let's go with 10 numbers. Highest number can be say, say 100. Oops, I've done something wrong somewhere. Let's have a look. Ah, we call it loop count and it's loop counter. Okay, let's fix that one. So let's try again. Back to main. Run it. 10 numbers. Largest is 100. That's populated our array. So looking at that, I've got 78 there as the largest. 4 looks like the smallest. 78 got the output. Let's go back to main. Let's copy that. Paste it there and let's say the smallest number is smallest number. Okay, there we go. So 10 numbers, largest is 100. It says 1. There's one indeed, it is there, 98. That's okay. Let's run it one more time. Let's say 10 numbers again, largest of 100 again. This time I've got 91 and 7. And there we go. I'm going to run it one more time. I'm going to say I'm going to have a 100 items, and you'll see how this slows it down now. We're having that print statement in. And the largest number, let's say, is 1000. Press enter, it goes through all the numbers. It's loaded the array, 996. And zero. Is that correct? Looks there's the zero, looks good to me. Okay. So we have a program that bases on our, our task here. Population array with random numbers. It's a, an unknown array at that time. We we set it up. Largest and smallest. If we look here, back in our main, when we declare we declare the size, we declare the array. So if we're having a fixed size array now fixed it to the size that we've decided here so it can be of any size we've just proved we've got our function call to load the array which is just a procedure because it doesn't return a value we've got our function call for big which returns the largest number the output the function call for small and the outputs there's our big function our small function which is exactly the same it's just checking for less than and then we've got our load array function it loads the array based on the size that we've passed it and the array itself thank you very much for watching there will be some uh, more videos coming up shortly